from information security or data security into physical, personal, operations security and Arnim will take you into communications and network security. So we'll cover everything. What can we do? Well, we can do two things. We can invent our own car, think about uh, how the car should look like, how it should drive, uh, what features uh, it should have, what wheels, and so on and so on. We can all, all also use best practices or go beyond and use standards. What you see is in the field of uh, security, information security, there are two standards that are common all over the world, also in the Netherlands. The first one left on the left uh, hand side is ISO 27001. That's on information security management system. It's quite boring. If you are a technically uh, minded person, that's how are you going to develop a management system to get information security done? And how are you going to monitor it? It's a management system. It's not concrete, it's not um, uh, to the point, it's not something that you can... Ah, here we have a countermeasure. I can apply it to my security. No. Then you need 27... 2002.2007 ISO IEC 27.2002 is a set of, um, you could say, measures or a set of uh, activities um, that every organization should look into and think about should I have a countermeasure according to this category in place, yes or no. Uh, it, it's often used as a checklist to audit the information security in an organization. You even can get a certification for the 27001 and the 27002. And if you have a certification, then it's some guarantee to the outside world that you have your information security in order. At least on paper. If you look into the uh, components of the uh, 27002, you see it starts with, over here, uh, paragraph or chapter one to uh, three is introduction terms and so and so on. You start with four risk management, and that composes of a risk assessment, risk analysis, and risk mitigation. Then five until fifteen are the categories that you have to think through in relation to your security, do we have it in place? If not, should we have it in place? But you can only talk about what policies do we have, how is our, our security organization, uh, how do we do asset management, how do we do our personal security, how do we do uh, physical security, uh, what do we do about operations security, how uh, uh, are we uh, performing on access control, on software development, on incident management, on business continuity and on compliance. If you want to check all those 10 categories, take a year and a half. It's nice as a means to help you to understand what security is, what information security is, and I will refer quite a, a few times to this uh, uh, model. Um, I will uh, deliver a, a, a digital version of the previous edition into the VLO because the actual um, 
version, the 2007 was the latest, I think so, by head. Um, you can only buy it, and it costs a lot of money. And when there is a new version, the older versions are relatively free available if you look correctly. So I will use risk assessment part four. Uh, and then I'll take you through seven asset management. Then we come to five, the policy and six, the organization, eight, personal security and nine physical uh, security. What I do in the uh, incident response is operations management, incident management, business continuity and compliance. So I'll take the whole range. Software development is typically part of a software security course in the fourth quarter and access control is a part in infrastructure security part with risk assessment and a part with software security. Who needs information security? What are the actors? Everybody! First of all the owners. The owners of the assets in the organization. The developers, the software engineers who are designing and uh, building and implementing uh, information solutions, applications. Then if they are live in production, we have the administrators to keep them up and running and apply patches if necessary. And of course, everything an owner, a developer and an administrator do is because the user needs to work with applications and needs the information to do the job he is hired for. And once in a while, there is an auditor that puts a thermometer into the organization and its information security to look into how well are you secured. So everybody uses information security, should use information security. That means that those who are learning to become a software engineer should be uh, well qualified to develop secure applications. Those who are willing to work in the field of system administration should learn and should be able to make a secure IT infrastructure and a user needs to know what to do to securely work with information and with the IT infrastructure and the owner yes he has to pay for and order secure applications that work on a secure IT infrastructure uh, and uh, make, make uh, uh, sure that users are performing their processes in a secure way. So it's interaction. Why? Why do we need information security? Well, think of the owner. The head of an organization uh, that can be the director of a small ca company, that can be if it's a bigger company or a bigger organization, the total C level, the CEO, the CIO, the CFO, whatever chief of organization you are, they only have one thing in mind, we have a target. We have a target that we want to achieve. And if we have a target, then activities in our organization should be performed. And if activities are performed to achieve our targets, then we have to sacrifice one thing or another. The resources we are putting into place, that can be uh, 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 personnel, that can be capital, that can be material, that can be anything that you use during the activities to reach your targets. <clears throat> and once in a while, every week, every month, every quarter, every year, uh, the director or the C-suit uh, or uh, management wants to know 
do we reach our targets, do we perform well, and don't we sacrifice too much or too less. They want to know how efficient and how effective the business is. Well, efficiency says something about the level, the balance between the activities you do and the sacrifices you give. Effectiveness says something about the activities you do and the targets you are achieving. If there is an unbalance, then you are ineffective or inefficient. So you want as a management or as owners to have high efficiency and high effectiveness. But if you want to know the, the status every week, every month, uh, every quarter, every year, what do you need? Most of all, information. The information that tells you something about how well or how bad are you performing. Where does this information come from? Well, information can only be, be produced by and through the, your IT infrastructure. And now we are talking about a crucial triad. Here you see CIA. That's not like the FBI or the NSA. This is the abbreviation of confidentiality, integrity and availability. In Dutch you see it often as BIF, the BIF code. CIA. So, what do you want? The owners who want to know how effective and how efficient they are in their business have need of confidential information. In information that is, has a, a high level of integrity. And the moment they need the information, it should be available. You can only achieve the CIA of information if you also have a CIA of your IT infrastructure. Unless you do all, everything by paper. Then you could say, well, we skip the information technology. We all do write our uh, numbers in books. But no business today without internet, so you always have some kind of information technology to make your IT infrastructure that produces, that moves, that stores, that uses your information. So that's why. Remember, as IT people, as an IT department, you are only serving like those seven serving men. The IT is serving the business. So business is first, then comes IT. So to help the business, the technology should be safe and secure. That's why we say information security performs four important funci functions for an organization. To keep the organization alive, no info, no life, no IT, no info, no life, or short. A safe operation of the IT infrastructure. Remember, not only a secure operation, but also a safe operation. You don't want your people or your employees at, as a user or developer or an administrator or even an auditor or even an owner get hurt. Protect the data. Yes, all the data, all the information. From today, from yesterday and the information for tomorrow, we need to protect. <coughs> And we also have to protect, to safeguard, the uh, technology parts, the components that we need uh, to produce, to move, to use, <coughs> and to store the information. So it's a great responsibility if we talk about information security. 
it's the heart of the business, but we are serving. And not the other way around. Goals. What's essential? Everything that we are doing, we are serving the organization, and the organization wants to reach a competitive position, keep it up, wants to have a, a, a nice cash flow, money, wants to be profitable, depending on <coughs> what line of business you're in, wants <coughs> continuity of the services they deliver to the environment, uh, the clients, uh, whatever. Um, you need to be compliant with all the regulations, uh, that's not easy, uh, that's easy said but not easy done. There are uh, quite a lot of regulations and depending on the kind of regulation, if you do not comply, you pay. <coughs> and you want to keep your good business reputation upright. If something goes wrong, then you have your fourth asset category, reputation, in problems. Basic principles, how, how do we achieve it? Stepping stones. Stepping stones means I'll turn up not the base, I turn up the pace. These are the 12 stepping stones you need. Absolute security, a 100% security doesn't exist. Keep dreaming. Even 99.9999 doesn't exist. Absolute security <coughs> is fake. <coughs> you know, Murphy? If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. That's Murphy's law. You only don't know when Murphy hits, but it will. the CIA again. Very, very important is that you make sure the CIA not only of your data, your information, but also of all the services that uh, 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 are related to your data or your information. Confidentiality, key term, property, information is not made available or disclosed, disclosure is a very important word, to unauthorized individuals, entity or processes. Integrity, safeguarding the accuracy and completeness of information. Availability, being accessible and usable, usable upon demand, not by anyone, only by an authorized entity is an entity that's allowed to do it. Defense in depth as strategy. You can't take one countermeasure and that is enough to get your security or your safety or boat in order. No, you have to build layers of security. Remember the picture? where the information was in the middle, you have layers at the bottom side, layers on the top side, so you have to build your defense in depth. More layers, from the outside to the inside. From physical security until the smallest part of your IT infrastructure security. Yep. When left on their own, people tend to make the worst security decisions, the weakest link. Humans, your personnel, whatever, if they are user or developer or administrator or auditor or owner, always the weakest link. You know uh, Anne Robertson with her program on the BBC? You are out, you are the weakest link. And if you uh, have a, a, a nice barrier on the road to your uh, parking spot, then you see what people do. They simply drive by the barrier. Or 
the oil switch. I don't see anything, I don't hear anything, so nothing is bad happening. Um, no, there's nobody uh, who knows the three, the three O's on fire. Onvoorzichtigheid, onwetendheid, onzorgvuldigheid. No? That you are too young. That's, uh, I think, out the 80s, maybe the 70s of the last century. It's uh, fire prevention. An awareness campaign to get people aware that there are three main causes why uh, a fire in a house is always starting. That's because of onvoorzichtigheid, onwetendheid en onachtzaamheid. The three O's. Functional and assurance requirements. Yes. Um, it's a balance between what the owners as managers have to do and have to make uh, policies for, the technologies that you want to put into place and the legal issues that you have to comply to. And it's a well sorted mix of the requirements out of th these three principal components that will make a good security. So you have to look into the risks for the organization, the obligations you have from uh, regulations and contracts, and what you want as principal targets and demands as an organization. And what is, uh, in the opinion of your organization, ethical to do or not to do. Security through obscurity is not an answer. If you want to put security in place, be open about it to your users, to your developers, to your administrators, even to your auditors. And it's not uh, uh, useful to be secret about it. No, we don't have security. No, we have everything fine. Simply state in the open, this is how we secure this, this is how we secure that, and this is how we secure the other thing. No obscurity. Security is risk management. This is the risk model. You're going to dream this model. I'm not explaining all the components, but we have owners, threat agents and assets. That is what we are going to tackle from next week. And one of these components or elements you can pick as topic for your uh, uh, research uh, assignment. <coughs> within, uh, within two weeks you can be woken up in the middle of the night and you could dream this model. I'll come back uh, to that uh, later uh, when we talk about risk management next week. Security controls. We have uh, a standard three types of security controls, preventative, up front, detective, when it's happening, and responsive, when it, you're noticed that it is happening. And then it's necessary to put controls in place to prevent the confidentiality, integrity and availability of your information and your IT infrastructure with the help of people, process and technology by preventative, detective, responsive and don't forget corrective controls, act actions. Corrective is often forgotten. Why? Well, we were stupid. Mur Murphy did strike and we had a problem, we had an incident. We weren't able to prevent it, we weren't able to detect it in time. We could respond to uh, the incident but it was too late. Uh, so we shook our shoulders and we went on to the daily use of everything. But corrective controls 
are essential because if you know where the holes in your security were, you can plug the holes and prevent the same attack from happening the next time. You're making Murphy it quite difficult. Complexity, yes. Our software engineers are learning to build uh, applications that are so complex these days. Our system and network engineers are building uh, IT infrastructures that are so complex today. Everything, the business you are doing is so complex because you have not only your, your normal old-fashioned business, but you also have your electronic business. You are working in a virtual and in a physical world. So, how more complex a system is becoming, that's the harder it is to keep security up. Keep it simple. FUD doesn't sell. Fear, uncertainty and doubt does not work in selling security. If you put a, a, a guard on every uh, floor of a building, if you um, want to uh, use a computer in your organization and you have to use your card for everything and everything to get into because somebody out there might threaten our organization and we don't want it to be so we are stuffing the whole outside of our organization and the whole inside with security controls, with security and equipment, because we are afraid as an owner. And as owners, we want to give you a fear uh, feeling uh, that you are aware that you constantly are looking over your shoulder, is there some bad guy or girl coming into our organization? So fear, uncertainty and doubt doesn't sell. Be open about it. And if something goes wrong, say that it went wrong and what you're going to do about it. And don't lie. No, nothing went wrong. Everything was fine. Oh. PPT. People, process and technology. We all need them together. The, the picture uh, on, on the left hand side of this uh, little chair is crucial to understand. You have a tripod, people, process, technology. If you invest in one of the legs only, then the leg is leaning over and you fall off the chair. So if you put effort in one, leg, you have to put effort in the other two legs too, because it needs to be stable. So the, the, the most common solution for a problem on security or information security is simply put some extra technology into business. One, one, one. It's good to put technology in, but technology should be used by people and should be uh, incorporated in processes. So the, the three components should be in the right balance. We'll talk about this quite often. How do you balance people, process and technology? Like I said, it's better to be open than to lie. That's why an open disclosure of vulnerabilities is good for security. Uh, we had in the Netherlands an, uh, 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 an organization that called GovCert. It's now part of uh, uh, the Department for National Security. Uh, there are a, a lot of um, companies um, that get out into the open if they discovered a vulnerability. And they also deliver the recipe how to get rid of this vulnerability. And then you are helping the 
people who are in charge of security to make the right choices, to patch a hole. And you have another, uh, some alternatives. So be open, open disclosure of vulnerabilities. And that is not the way uh, some companies do. Uh, don't tell the, the, the whole world, only tell it me and I will pay you for it. That's not open disclosure. How to achieve? There are three ways. How you through those 12 stepping stones can achieve information security. The first one is the common one, establish it by policy making. After that, after you've made the policies, you enforce the policies upon uh, the people in your organization and uh, once in a while you audit if to know, because you want to know if you are compliant with all the policies and when there is something not complying and your enforcement is not being strong enough then you start educating because you want to raise the awareness of everybody who was not complying to the policies you made. So the normal, the standard way to perform is first A, establish, then B, enforce, and then C, to educate. That's exactly the way how not to achieve information security. That's the wrong way. Start with education, awareness raising. If you want to establish, then you think about this money picture. Remember, you have your targets as an organization, you perform your activities and you do your sacrifices and all should be efficient and effective. You need information and you need information technology that both, uh, both have to uh, uh, comply to CIA. If this is what you are want to establish, then as management, you have to do this. You have to do planning and control. Boring, boring, boring. Because planning and control, you need to define your targets, your activities and your sacrifices. When you have planned and controlled your strategy, you have to uh, um, announce your means. What do you need? What information do you need? And what information technology do you need? And what you <coughs> then demand is once in a while you want to know how efficient and effective you are. You want your insight in the actual or factual status of your business. And you have to be sure that you can rely on the information that is produced. What do you need to get this picture of the uh, former slide to life? A set of policies and control measures. So you have to think about policies of information management, about information security. You have to define policies for the users department, for the developers department, for the administrators department. You have to develop policies and control measures for all information systems, for your complete IT infrastructure. Boring, boring, boring. If you want to step into this field, then you are with ISMS, Information Security Management System, ISO 27000-001. When you have your policies ready, then you can enforce your policies and the control measures you defined upon your users, upon your software engineers, upon your administrators, because you have to comply. And if you want to comply, then there are three absolute essential obligations that come from the law. You have to protect personal information. You have to protect specific business documents that have a uh, 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 need of high security, absolutely confidential. 
and you have to protect your intellectual property so your recipes uh, uh, your, your, your inventions or whatever that's your first layer and you have to comply if you don't you could be fined or sued then you have seven best practices that come from all around the world and if you are able to um, define policies and c control measures on these seven items you could be well, right on information security you, you need a policy what is information security for your company you have to assign responsibilities what users what uh, uh, developers what administrators can do may do uh, shouldn't do what regarding to information security raise awareness what is information security and train and educate now the, the difficulties correct processing and applications yes then you need uh, uh, secure uh, software developers that <coughs> are able to uh, build secure applications uh, that are well tested <laughs> Testing is a kind of documentation, uh, so that's boring. Uh, most uh, applications that ha has been engineered, uh, if they are tested by good testers, you find something. Control of technical vulnerability. Bah, if you're a system and network engineer, well, put some components into your IT infrastructure, firewall this, uh, don't bother about the default settings, uh, uh, and so on and so on. And even if you know that uh, a component is known as <coughs> very, very bad and uh, with uh, uh, some extra money you could buy a um, far better component but you are a cisco lover so it should be a cisco component then of course you introduce uh, technical technical vulnerabilities and both the um, developers and the administrators are uh, responsible for the business continuity on behalf of the it infrastructure and the information did you ever write a business continuity plan for your software or for your hardware? Did you ever uh, think about disaster recovery if something really goes wrong? Of course not. What if, number 10, there is an uh, uh, information security incident? Huh? No, it were the developers that made a bad application, the administrators say. No, it are the administrators because they didn't convert it right from the test uh, environment to the live environment, do the developers say. But still we had an uh, incident. Who is to blame? Well, to blame is fine, but first solve the problem. Get the business running improve it because business continu continuity is at stake because of uh, vulnerabilities in your applications and in your IT infrastructure because your people weren't aware of the problems or weren't trained and educated well enough and the owners didn't assign all the responsibilities uh, for information secu security well enough because there was a bad security uh, policy okay what can we do enforcing or better establishing enforcing doesn't work that way <coughs> we go another way educating raise the awareness of all the people in your organization according to information security or security How are we going to do it? This is a very crucial part because you get a practical assignment on awareness. How to do it? What to use? Oops! How to do it? What to use? <coughs> do you know the marketing abbreviation AIDA? 
It comes from marketing, okay? Aida is also an opera written by Verdi, a composer, but that is not the Aida. I'm, I mean, it's Aida, it's from marketing, it's an abbreviation of attention, interest, desire, action. If you want to get a message across, and a marketeer wants to sell the product of his or her organization, marketeers use this formula, AIDA. First, they want to grab your attention. Ah, are you listening? Or are you looking? Then they want to raise your interest. Ah, I got something for you. And they show you something that develops, that you develop a desire. You want to know more about it first. And maybe afterwards you want to buy it, try it. Because after the desire, a marketeer wants you to come into action and wants to trigger you by the message he's conveying to do something with the object, do something with the commercial, buy the product. We are the best. So this same formula, getting the attention of somebody, by showing something of interest to make him desire to know, want to know more, finally to come into action to do something with it, that formula you can use on the people as your main P. Process is the next step. So, well, how to do? Use AIDA, get attention, interest, desire, action, and then what to use? We use three elements to raise awareness. First, confrontation. Then storytelling. Then uh, investigating. You can use all three at the same time, or only one component. Uh, it depends on the topic or the audience. First, the confrontation. I used to do with my part-time students uh, every year a quick scan on information security and uh, the context was the organization where the part-time student worked during daytime and the question uh, to be answered was where does this organization stand in accordance to the security code, the ISO 27002. So the task they had to perform as a student were, was as follows, do a quick scan, it w I gave them an automated quick scan based on uh, the 27002, uh, do a quick scan with employees on three different levels, so the highest management level, uh, medium and uh, the, the, the bottom level, or if you don't have three management uh, levels, then uh, 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 for example a system administrator, uh, a system developer, and maybe an, uh, a person who is uh, in charge of uh, information security or compliance or whatever. After doing the quick scan, this uh, tool determines uh, how mature the organization is, how conscious they are about uh, information security and which measures they should have in place but haven't got in place. So you can give suggestions for improvement. The answer for this organization is to say, hey, here you are in accordance to <coughs> the security code. To show you, uh, uh, this is the same thing, so we had questions about uh, each of these categories from 5 policy until 15 compliance. This is the tool they uh, use, it's, it's in Dutch, but these are the, the 10 uh, categories and if uh, the answer could only be yes, no, don't know. If you have yes, that's positive, if you have no, that's negative, and if you have don't know, then it's uh, not positive, negative, then it's, uh, we work with colors, yellow, red, and green. Positive answer is green, negative answer is red, I don't know is yellow. 
after putting all the answers into this uh, tool, then you see for the uh, 10 categories here, you see the overall score for the total organization and for the three different levels, the, the three persons that has been asked to give the answers to the questions. If you look into the three legal obligations every organization has to comply to, then you see here the results. Based on the answers and the results, <coughs> um, the maturity level, according to information security, can be determined. The lowest level is level zero. Then they are totally unaware of the risks, according to information security, and they have nearly nothing in place as safeguards or countermeasures. Before I send the students away to their organizations to do this uh, quick scan, I asked them to estimate the maturity level of their own organization on information security. What do you think the maturity level was commonly mentioned? It can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The, 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 Five is the highest level, is if you talk about, maybe you know the model of uh, CMM, capability maturity uh, model in software engineering. Five is the highest level, perfect, nearly perfect, and zero is, uh, well, you have to start. If you ask a person who works in an organization what maturity level his or her organization should of is at the moment according to information security what's the common answer we are at level five, five. five. well the part-time students were a little bit more modest they said at least three so they were estimating that well they were nearly here, you're young, you're innocent, you think we're the best, so everybody can say we're five, better isn't possible. Then they did the quick scan and they came back with the results. Every organization from every part-time student was at maturity level zero. There was one organization that was at level one. Why? Because they all failed on the legal obligations. They forgot to safeguard their intellectual property, their business documents and their personal information. If I did it a couple of years after uh, um, with, with new students and new and everything it was every time it was the same result maturity level zero they had to do a presentation at their own organization with the results of this quick scan what do you think the reaction shall be from the side of the organization well, they won't believe probably hmm? they won't believe they're just students yes they wouldn't believe it but if you have the arguments and you can show these schemes, these pictures, yes, this is what you answered. This is, these are really the results, what we got from uh, the, the three people we questioned. And that's confrontation. Ooh! Are we at level zero? Uh, then, uh, 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 and it's uh, mainly based on the three legal obligations, then we really do have a problem. Thank God I showed you this tool. Determined not only the maturity and the consciousness, but also su made suggestions about what measures to take 
when you had a negative red answer or a yellow answer. So it was a big win for the uh, student towards his own organization to show, yes, yes, okay, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, you are at level zero, but if you define a project and we do these measures that are highly necessary for at least to tackle those three shortcomings, if you don't have those three shortcomings, then you are, are at level one. So th this is a nice way, don't start defining policies, countermeasures, don't enforce uh, all this paperwork on all your people, simply raise awareness in this way by confronting them with the real life results and then they come into action. So that's one possibility. The other possibility is to tell a story. Storytelling is a, an, a, a form of narrative. What happened? How did it happen? Um, do you know uh, the narrative of a fairy tale? Long, long time ago, there was a little boy and a little girl. Suddenly, something happened. Blah, 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 blah. And at the end, they happily lived ever after. That's a fairy tale. Three parts. Introduction, action, reaction, and most of the times a happy end. You can talk about shit that has happened and how this shit happened um, by picturing out events with a specific meaning. For example, you could tell a story about real money in the physical world. If you have a shop, you start on the left hand side above, uh, if you comply with the, the latest regulation on how uh, to uh, protect your retail business, then you can see uh, our customers uh, like privacy, please uh, wait behind the yellow line. You see real money handed over, checked if it's uh, not uh, counterfeited money. Uh, your money is stored in a, in a holder uh, and not, net, not in the cash drawer. At the end of the day, uh, the money is uh, taken out of uh, the vault and travels with the official uh, uh, money transporter to the bank. In the bank, it's uh, count it for and then put into the big fold of the bank and it stores all the money. Well, you, 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 you can simply tell or uh, show such a story. This is what really happens, but our real money in our physical world encounter physical threats. Maybe you know the movie The Bank Job. Some guys that rent a store next to a bank they dig under the wall, they come up in the vault of the bank, they get all the money out of the vault and they go back under the ground <coughs> out of the store. Marvelous movie. Um, well, the pictures show for themselves what physical threats in the real money physical world are. But you can also tell a story about virtual money in the physical world. We pay, not with cash money, real money anymore, but with virtual money in many ways. But virtual money have a problem that you can have outside threats that steal your virtual money. Uh, and nobody, if, if it's an internet uh, payment, uh, nobody knows if you are a cat or a dog who's doing uh, uh <coughs> the threat. Uh, money laundering is uh, made uh, possible because of transferring virtual money. But you can also talk about virtual money and not the outside threats, but the inside threats. Maybe you uh, uh, know Nick Leeson of the Barings uh, Bank, who was a broker 
that gambled with uh, quite a lot of money of the Barings Bank, and uh, the director uh, the director didn't know about it, and he was uh, well, he flew, and he was uh, captured in Singapore. Uh, maybe you know the case of uh, Jérôme Kerville, uh, uh, a Frenchman who um, <coughs> stole a lot of money of his home own bank. Maybe you know, uh, if you are Dutch, iSafe, where a lot of uh, <coughs> uh, communities and uh, uh, departments stored their money on the, the iSafe bank on Iceland, and that seemed to be not quite <coughs> nice. Uh, maybe you knew, you know. Uh, the DSB bank, fraud, and so on. So you have to be aware that when you are talking about virtual money, you are facing outside threats, like the real money in the physical world, but you are also facing insider threats. Your own people. So you can tell a story. And finally, you can raise awareness by investigating. Shit happens. But if this shit has happened, then you have to be aware what the effects are of the incident that took place. You have effects on liability. You as an owner have a legal liability and sometimes you have a contractual liability towards your clients or maybe uh, other parties and the effect of an incident is often damage direct damage indirect um, Murphy is always there so preventing is not always possible 100% safety 100% security is a dream, a fantasy. Uh, the only thing you are able to do is minimize the damage when you have an incident. But it's not common when you have had an incident to do a good incident investigation. What happened? And how did it happen? Why? Because what could come out as answers to those questions could be quite embarrassing. I'm not going to learn you how to investigate, maybe in the course incident response. And I do it in, in, in the minor and there's going to be a, a totally new thematical semester on digital forensic investigations that is doing this kind of job, but that will be 2015, 16, the second semester. Hope so. Okay. So don't establish, don't enforce, but educate. And if you want to educate, then you are going to raise awareness, awareness and simply by doing two things, here we are, there we should be, and this is the way how we come from here to there. And in um, official terms, we have the current situation, we call that the East, the wanted situation, we call that officially the Zal. From current to want situation is the way, how to get there. Uh, by raising consciousness, take the educating part, confronting storytelling and investigating, take the confronting together with storytelling as awareness, and then if the people are aware, A, E, they are attention, interest, desire, action, they want to know more, so then you can start, train them, educate them, so that they are prepared for an incident that could happen. They are ready. I'm almost ready. Summary. 
Okay, looking back, after you have finished this lesson, and you haven't finished it yet because you get homework, but when you have studied the slides, uh, uh, read the chapters in the book, um, finish the practical assignment, you should be able to understand key terms and critical concepts of information security. We've seen them all. Understand the field of information security, information security. Understand the duties and responsibilities around information security to enable, to enforce, to educate. Understand the basic principles toward information security, the 12 stepping stones. Understand how to achieve information security and understand the importance of information security awareness. Practical assignment. What are you going to do? Tell a story. You've heard quite a lot this afternoon according to about information security or security. I give you the material, I'll show you how it looks like, and the activities you are going to perform are as follows. Y you have to look a partner in crime. So you do it in pairs. Look through the pictures. I'll show you the pictures in a moment. Think about the catchy story. What do you want to convey? What do you want to tell? your colleagues. Then you outline your story in parts, like I did in the fairy tale introductionary part, once they were living blah 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 blah. The main part, this happened and then that happened and then the, and then the finishing and they were living happily ever after. So that's a threefold, but you can t make a fivefold or... But take an uneven number Three parts or five parts and divide the story that you think over those years. You have to start with an introduction and you, have, have, you need a closing and the middle part is flexible. Outline a story, then if you know what story you want to tell, you select from all the pictures, the pictures you think are appropriate to your story and then you visualize your story using the pictures you selected. The result that you are going to produce and deliver is a PowerPoint. That's your visualization. Okay. After learning, uh, uh, studying uh, chapter one from Stellings, you should be able to blah 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 blah. Just read it. Homework. Individual, finish lecture one. It's important that you know what I mean with certain words. If I say study the slides, then you have to study it. You, you must be able, after studying the slides, to use the terms and the concepts on the slides. If I say read, then you simply um, Look into the text and if there are uncertainties or unknown components or you don't know what it means, simply make a note and then uh, uh, put your question forward either during the next lecture or during the tutoring sessions. So, what I want to do, when you are finishing lecture one, study the slides, all the slides that I put on the VLO, read the book, Chapter 0, study the book, chapter 1, take the self-assessment that belongs to chapter 1, prepare lecture 2, read the book, chapter 14. So don't study chapter 14, only read it. Then you know some of the terms and concepts that we are using in the next lecture ab about uh, um, risk management. In pairs, first form the pairs, then you perform as a pair your uh, assignment zero, upload the results. So you make a PowerPoint, 
that can contain uh, 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 a lot of slides, depending on your story. Upload your results to the Dropbox. Deadline. Remember, if I say deadline, then it's absolutely a deadline. If you're not able to uh, uh, upload it, <coughs> your result m Monday, Monday, the 9th of February, 10 o'clock in the morning, then I have to uh, uh, take into account that you weren't uh, achieving the deadline and it will influence your grade for this assignment. Okay. Questions about the homework? I'll show, yeah? Yeah, uh, about uh, turning in the assignment. Do we have to put our names in the title of the document? Or? Okay, um, I, d I don't need to know uh, who is going to work with whom now or on Thursday, but the uh, opening slide on your PowerPoint should have the name of the story and uh, the, name of, uh, the names of the pair. Yeah? Uh, and, and if you are from IFSEC 1 or IFSEC 2. I don't like student numbers, they are only for, uh, for the administration. I want your names, full name. Okay, I'll show you uh, the pictures. If you go and look for the uh, not official website from uh, Prentice Hall, but William Stallings has its own website, uh, and if you look into that own website from William Stallings, you find uh, the official uh, slides belonging to the book. You can use it, you can use everything that is on Stallings uh, website. What I did for you Listen very carefully, I will only say it once. Stallings uses in the slides to the uh, book a lot of pictures. I took all these pictures out of his slides and put them into one PowerPoint. These are the pictures. So your job is, look as a pair into these pictures, maybe there are some pictures that especially um, draws your attention, you find interesting and you want to do something with it, so s simply select those pictures, it's, it's a, an open PowerPoint as you can grab uh, every figure, every picture out of this uh, uh, PowerPoint set. You can make it bigger or smaller, you can uh, turn it, you can duplicate it, whatever you want to do with it as a pair, but this is the subset of all Stallings pictures and that's your material. Build a story by using the pictures out of this set and this is what, what you are composing your PowerPoint with. Is that clear for everybody? Okay. <laughs> then uh, it's right on time. <laughs>